we come across multi-phase flows every single day, even though we may or may not pay attention to a lot of these. Um, they can be broadly classified into, uh, you know, some of uh, some of these flows. I mean, I've listed six of them here. Um, when I say gas liquid flows, what it means is um, I have a continuous liquid phase uh, where I have gas bubbles being transported within this continuous liquid phase. Similarly, I have gas solid flows. I mean, I have solid particles in a continuous gas phase. Uh, my liquid gas flows would be an example of rain. I mean, I have gas or air as my continuous phase and I have uh, liquid droplets falling down in this uh, continuous phase medium. Uh, we would have solid liquid flow where my continuous phase would be liquid and my dispersed phase would be solid. An example of this uh, would be a tank where you're trying to suspend solid particles or you, you want to like, you know, dissolve your solid particles in a liquid phase and you're, you know, stirring this mixture in a stir tank. That would be an example of a solid liquid flow. Similarly, some, some systems have all the three phases. You would have gas, solid and liquid phase in, in, a, in a system. Uh, so we, we discussed the fluid mechanics aspect of these uh, different problems, right? But then these problems, they're also coupled with other mechanisms. And some of those are heat transfer, right? I mean, we had some questions on, you know, how to account for temperature of the system. Um, usually these systems, they, uh, they're they also coupled with heat transfer. Either, um, either the systems generate heat, in which case you need to cool the equipment by taking the heat out through a cooling jacket or something. So there is usually some form of heat transfer. Uh, there is also phase change. You could have uh, your liquid phase evaporating. Uh, so you, an egg, boiling would be an example of this. I mean, uh, initially you would have all liquid, but then you would form these gas bubbles uh, because of phase change within the system. Um, so this is a fairly complex problem to handle, uh, but you would see that uh, in a multi-phase flow system. Uh, there could be mass transfer. Um, so you would see this in, in the case of uh, gas liquid flows where uh, the mass could be, you know, uh, transferring across the surface from your gas bubble to your liquid phase. Um, similarly, for liquid-liquid uh, flow problems, uh, there could be some sort of mass transfer uh, from one phase to the other phase um, across the interface. Um, usually there are chemical reactions going on uh, in a lot of these flows. Uh, so your species are uh, being formed or uh, destroyed uh, as the process takes place. Um, and when we have these discrete particles, for example, gas bubbles or liquid droplets, these can uh, collide with each other, uh, they can form a bigger droplet or a bigger bubble. Um, if there is turbulence in the system, then uh, the turbulence can act on the liquid particles, break one into two or more smaller particles. So you could account for all these mechanisms uh, individually or a combination of some of these uh, if they're dominant in the system um, in your CFD approach. So uh, today, we have fairly well established uh, guidelines to account for a number of these mechanisms uh, within multi phase flow framework uh, to solve fairly complex problems.